Hi, I'm Carl, and I'm going to demonstrate how you can make an excited state of the magnesium-26 nucleus from the alpha proton reaction on sodium-23, and then observe the electric quadrupole gamma ray transitions from the excited magnesium. Let's go see how it's done in the home environment. So that was a bunch of gobbledygook, but uh, luckily the recipe is very simple. It involves salt, a uh, source of sodium, and of course a source of alpha particles, a polonium-210 uh, static eliminator. This is the so-called nucleus spot that's sold by uh, uh, NRD. It's actually not sold, you lease it technically. I mean, you do have to turn it back in after a while you can't take it apart or anything like that. But this is a very simple experiment to put together. We are just going to open us up some salt and uh, with any luck I will manage to pour most of it into that motherfucker. That's a bit much. That's on a high sodium diet obviously. So we are going to fill our alpha source with uh, good old sodium chloride and yeah, this is a bit of a mess. And then that's what I have the tape for is to cover this son of a bat. Yeah. Ah. Cover it up. Just like that. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Now we are bombarding sodium in the form of sodium chloride with alpha particles. And we want to look for that gamma ray that I mentioned from the excited magnesium that results from that alpha P reaction. To do that we need a radiation detector and the better the radiation detector uh, the better resolution it has for the energy of the gamma rays the more we'll be able to distinguish them from background and the faster the experiment can get done. So we're going to head across my little bedroom here to the high purity germanium detector. That's this, uh, cooled by uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, the detector itself is up here. It's uh, the cans at room temperature. Uh, there's a doer. The nitrogen goes into the doer and, and makes the inside of it cold, but the doer itself stays warm. It's insulated by a vacuum, so the only losses are by radiation and the vacuum is produced by this pump right here. Keeps it nice and uh, nice and uh, cold in the very middle of this thing. Germanium detector of course is a semiconductor detector and the charge is liber liberated by radiation that enters the detector uh, is then collected and can be used to uh, quantify the energy of that uh, radiation. So we're just going to stick this polonium source down there. God, freaking tape. Alright, just like that right up against the end of the crystal just like so and uh, we are ready to run our experiment and look for these gamma rays so I will proceed to crush my fingers under some very large pieces of lid and we are ready to go let's look at the uh, computer here this is a uh, pulse height uh, spectrum I'm going to hit the clear and start button and we're going to begin acquiring a spectrum Immediately, immediately we note one very large peak, and it's it's the peak that's uh, you know right where the cursor is right now. This is uh, about an 800 keV peak. It's a gamma ray from uh, from the polonium itself. Polonium decays mostly uh, by alpha emission without this this other transition, this gamma ray. But in something like oh I don't know a tenth of a percent of decays, you get this gamma ray. And that source in there is five millicuries of polonium, so it's it's rather warm. Uh, some like ten times that much was used to kill a dude in Britain by the Russians. Um, so it's a lot of polonium, and uh, that's what accounts for that gamma ray. But we are actually looking for a gamma ray that's that's uh, that's further out here somewhere, and uh, there may not be evidence of it for several hours. You can see I've set the live time, I've set this to count for 25,000 seconds. So it's going to count overnight. We're going to do this experiment overnight. And uh, 
Well, I just have to see what happens in the morning. But we're not so interested in this. So I'm not going to auto scale the Y. I'm just going to scale it by hand so that we can look down at um, the region right here. We're going to be looking for a peak in this area and it may take it quite some time to accumulate. So, it's so off to bed we go and we'll check up on this tomorrow. Our count of the polonium source with the salt on it is concluded. Now we need to take a background and for this situation that means the polonium source without the salt on it. So we're just going to pull this bad boy out. Get the tape off of it. There we go. And find an appropriate receptacle for the salt to be returned. Now we're just going to come back. We have the bare polonium source. We're going to set that right there like we had it before. Now let's get rolling. Let's take a background. Once again we notice the polonium gamma ray is still there. Uh, that hasn't gone anywhere. But hopefully our, uh, our other uh, gamma ray is, is much diminished at this point. This is the uh, gamma ray spectrum resulting from the bombardment of salt, sodium chloride, by alpha particles from a sealed polonium-210 source. Now we've gathered this spectrum over 25,000 seconds of live time in the detector. The most interesting and, and prominent thing here in, the, uh, in this spectrum is the uh, 803 kV uh, peak from uh, the decay of polonium-210. I mentioned this earlier and it sort of dominates the spectrum everywhere from 803 kV all the way down to zero uh, by way of a Compton continuum. What we're looking for in this experiment is gamma rays that result from excited states of the magnesium-26 product nucleus and we'll find those out here in the range of maybe one to, one to three uh, MeV. So uh, let's move in here. Now we're looking at the energy range of one MeV to three MeV and we can uh, uh, see these peaks in more detail. This is without the background subtracted so immediately we note that a lot of these peaks are attributable to uh, sort of ambient uh, radioactivity from uh, the uranium and thorium decay chains. For instance uh, 2.6 MeV is a thallium 208 peak. We have potassium 40. We have a number of peaks attributable to uh, bismuth 214 in the uranium decay chain. The peaks we're looking for are here as well. Uh, and are quite prominent. We can see this 1809 keV peak. This is the big one that we're looking for. This is from the first excited state of magnesium 26 decaying. And one thing we can note about this peak and some of these others that are due to uh, alpha reactions are that they're sort of broad relative to many of these from uh, the uh, background radioactivity. They sort of have this this wider shape and I'll uh, give an explanation for that shortly. Let's uh, subtract the background now. Here we are with background gone. You'll notice a lot of those peaks from bismuth and so forth are now gone and we're left with two prominent peaks. One here at 1809, magnesium 26 uh, uh, de-excitation peak out here. Another one at 1133 kV and then there's one negative going peak. Uh, this is probably, in my view, due to uh, bombardment of uh, aluminum uh, in the detector can, which occurs when the bare unsalted alpha source is put against the can. So that's an interesting uh, case of a negative peak. Um, but uh, let's, uh, let's now take a look at uh, a website here from the National Nuclear Data Center. Anybody can look up any of these uh, data for uh, any nuclide of interest. These are uh, energy levels and gamma, ray, uh, gamma rays for magnesium-26, which we just made. Here is that 1809 keV 
gamma ray that we're observing and it's associated with the first excited state of the nucleus. It decays uh, with this, as, as I said earlier, an electric uh, quadrupole uh, multipolarity um, emitting that 1809 keV gamma ray and this is the half-life. This is uh, the half-life of that excited state. Um, 476 femtoseconds. Uh, very short. Most of the time when we think about radioactive sources we're thinking about things that last uh, usually on the order of years, at least for many of our little check sources and things. So this is very short and in fact uh, a lot of this uh, nuclei, a lot of these magnesium-26 nuclei that we make will decay while they are still recoiling from the energetic reaction, the, a, the AP reaction that produces the isotope. So uh, because they're recoiling and have significant energy, we can expect some Doppler broadening of the uh, gamma rays. And in fact, that's probably a good explanation for why these peaks associated with the uh, AP reaction on sodium are as wide as they are. That's probably uh, Doppler broadening there. If we look at our spectrum uh, once more, here's this other peak, the 1133 keV peak. Uh, the second excited state out here at uh, almost 3 MeV uh, energy is associated with that decay, or as they call it, is 1130 keV, close enough. Uh, it decays with uh, a mixed multipolarity uh, uh, gamma rays. Uh, down to the first excited state and of course that then decays again. And this, uh, this decay is not nearly as probable as, as this one, probably just because uh, it, it takes more uh, energy to, to reach this excited state and that's energy that the particles from our source may not have by the time they uh, interact with the nucleus. So uh, in conclusion we've made uh, magnesium 26. We uh, are able to see the decay radiation quite nicely in this experiment. Uh, this is an easy experiment to do at home, at least as far as making the magnesium-26 isotope. The hard part, of course, is unfortunately the rather uh, expensive and, and uh, difficult to uh, obtain uh, germanium detector. That's really what makes this kind of experiment possible with such low-level sources. But nonetheless, you can be assured that if you put a, a strong alpha source in contact with table salt, you will be making, transmuting some uh, sodium into magnesium by doing that. And this is just merely uh, a, a good source of evidence that that's happening. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope to be back shortly with more experiments.